Hey, welcome to this, the first Smarter Business podcast uh, that we're recording via Zoom because we're all still stuck at home. And on this uh, episode of the Smarter Business podcast, we actually have two guests. We have Paul Greiner, who uh, anybody who's watched uh, probably already knows. Uh, Paul's got a bit of an announcement today. And then we have Dan Wanglin from Renowned Creative. Renowned Creative is a great partner to VidWheel. We do a lot of work with them and they have some really exciting news about a big launch that they're doing. So, Dan, I will give you a moment to just go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and you can tell us a little bit about what Renowned does. So, I'm the owner and founder of Renowned Creative. I founded the company in 2006. Uh, back then it was, uh, I was had a full-time position. So I like to say that I had a nine to five and then Renowned Creative was my five to nine, but really it was more like, you know, seven to two thirty in the morning. Um, but long story short, we've grown the company now to be a agency of six people, uh, with a really solid roster of clients. We have clients all over the U S. Um, and recently we've relaunched ourselves as the customer success agency. And what that means basically is we identified a long time ago that, you know, we have certain deliverables that people think of us for branding, websites, print design, graphic design, which is great. Um, but ultimately <clears throat> people need that work to, to work for them. They need a return on that. So it was a natural progression to go from design to marketing and then marketing creates leads. And then what we're doing is we're going to start helping people manage those leads so they can actually convert to sales. And then after that, and they're a customer, helping those customers actually become a referral source. So it really, uh, we talk about the, the flywheel and HubSpot, and it's really kind of that idea where not only are we creating the initial deliverables and, and creating marketing plans, it's a marketing execution, but then ultimately really creating something that reduces churn, increases revenue, uh, helps people be more profitable because we make them uh, more efficient with the resources that they have and in really helping them deliver uh, true value in terms of their sales and marketing. Why don't you tell, I guess, the uh, listeners and watchers why uh, we brought Paul in on this kind of renowned uh, creative podcast. Sure. I mean, one of the, obviously the big announcement is that, you know, Paul is now working directly with us. Um, and, you know, we've always considered that, you know, Vidwheel and Renowned Creative were kind of like sister companies. We walked hand in hand. We had lots of overlap on lots of clients. It was always proved to be very successful. Um, Working with us gives Paul uh, opportunity to sell more than just video. Um, now we, there's there's more marketing, um, so it kind of arms him with some more information so that he can offer actually better and more value for his his prospects as well. Um, it just kind of rounds out, I think, the uh, the whole experience for everybody involved. Um, you know, there's a lot of work that we do that involves the work from VidWheel in terms of video production that we don't handle in house that we lean on you guys for, and vice versa. You you know. Um, and, and it just, it seemed like a symbiotic relationship for all three parties. Excellent. I absolutely agree. I think it'll, I think it'll work out well. And Paul gets to sell some, some, you know, more holistic, uh, marketing versus like just kind of our little slice of the pie. So, congrats, well, I mean, one of the Paul. things you have to consider yep. is, is when people are, are in the, the market, the shop for, you know, design or marketing or websites or whatever it is they already have a project in mind um, and they've made up their mind to to take on that particular project so what they have in mind could be a logo and a rebrand it could be a website it could be a marketing plan it could be social media it could be video we want to make sure that we offer a value for wherever they are in that cycle some people are just starting a business some people are launching a rebrand somebody having a some people might have an established business and really what they're doing is they're just trying to look in, to make some incremental growth and some improvements and refinements on it. Um, and now we have an opportunity to, to really serve all of those people, regardless of where they are in their business life cycle. Absolutely. All the, yeah, from every angle. So it's a, it's a much more full right. uh, service um, type of situation. So I think right. it's great. Paul, do you have any thoughts? Yep. You haven't said anything yet. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, sometimes I just like to sit back and take it all in. Um, I just finished a call, so I just talked for an hour straight. Uh, yeah, no, I think that, I, I mean, obviously, uh, I think the relationship's going to go well. Uh, that's why we've started all this, right? Um, and I think the services, I like the, I like the new positioning. And 
my sense of the community and my network, like what they think of me is as some kind of like interventionist kind of strategy kind of idea person. And so that's what they tend to come to me for. And yeah, having a full complement of services and uh, options to give, uh, like Dan said, wherever they are in the process versus just this one place that we can do this one thing, uh, I think allows us to help more people. Um, and obviously it also uh, allowed for, and you know, we've had such unprecedented times of late, um, <clears throat> but you know, we, we, we we, some of us are required to change, you know, Renown was heading down a path already and, you know, like here was the idea and here's this and, you know, there's going to be a website, which I think we'll, we'll talk about. And then I think on our side on VidWheel, we definitely we just had to make some changes and figure out a new path forward. And I think that these two paths forward lined up uh, wonderfully. Uh, I mean, thankfully for me, and I'm pretty grateful for it because, you know, to be in a position where we're moving forward is, uh, is good and right. right yeah yeah and we'll get to right. our our kind of pivot and so on a little bit later but um yeah. let's uh yeah let's start let's talk about the launch so uh you've repositioned yourself a bit dan um a big piece of it is the website and that was the first piece that i saw um mm -hmm. i guess I don't know. Do you have any thoughts on it? What What is different about the way you're you're kind of putting your information out there than you know maybe a I, I don't know that it's necessarily a reposition as much as it is a natural evolution. Um, you know, as you work with people and when, you, when we we get pretty intimately involved in our customers' businesses, um, so it you start to uncover and start to peel back the onion a little bit, and and you see what it is that people really need in order to be successful and. Um, I think that's kind of how we just adapted naturally to it and grew into it and said, well, if we, if we're purposeful about this more than just accidental and uh, rather than just kind of rely on clients to say, Hey, could you help with this? And we're going to say, no, this is something that we do purposefully. This is all part of the plan. I think that's more of, of what the, our, our strategic initiative has been is be more purposeful with that. Um, and, and talk to people in terms of like, you know, you have to make all of these things work together rather than us just be a, piece of the puzzle and leave the rest up to you right it's like the idea that companies hire consultants and a consultant comes in and provides a report to you that's this thick and he hands it off to you and says okay good luck implementing that right we don't want to be those guys we want to be the ones that say well here's what we think you should do here's how to do it here's how to apply it here's how to teach your team how to do it and then when this gets results here's what to do with those results to then continuously grow and evolve yeah, well put, well so put. So that's kind um, of it in a nutshell. Um, yeah. 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 The, the biggest challenge we had was just, you know, we're, we're the, the consummate shoemaker's son, right? So uh, our website redesign was in process for about almost three years. Um, and we're still working on it. Uh, it is, it is launched, uh, you know, but we're still have, we have dozens and dozens of case studies that we still have to get up and we have a lot of different stories to tell. So I think that's the biggest thing for me looking forward, um, looking forward to as the owner of the company is seeing how we're going to continue to tell the story that we have already in place and tell that to people and, and show people what exactly we've been up to for the last, you know, five or six years. Yeah. Yeah. I know how that goes. The, uh, the project page on our website is, uh, uh, it's, it's a, there's a lot of old stuff. <laughs> there, we we called our we yeah. called our old website the abandoned playground. That's how we referred to it. You know, people would come to us and say like, "Oh, I checked out your site," and we're like, "Yeah, maybe you shouldn't do that." Here's <laughs> yeah. a here's a PDF of some of the work that we've done. Uh, you know, we just kind of <laughs> right. fix some of the projects. Um, but no, it's it's good to finally have some of that in place and and kind of you know, like really reintroduce with people about what we've been up to. I think. Um, I feel like we've flown under the radar for quite some time and now it's time to, to kind of start to, you know, take credit for the great work we've done. Right. Right. Yeah. And yeah, there's, there's been some great projects that we've, that we've been involved with and clients and so on. Like I've seen some of the stuff and it's, yeah, you guys definitely taken yeah. a different angle and there is, there's, it's like you said, it's maybe, you know, maybe more of a public repositioning or, but, it's some it's stuff right. we've been doing all along, right? Like I think it of is. The, it is. Yeah, I think. I of think an, one of the things that really. Oh, 
Yeah, okay. yeah. Energy Mark, Solar by CIR, Niagara Transformer, those types of companies. I think one of the things that um, really was kind of the catalyst for the change in our thought was we had a, a client that we had worked um, with another design agency, and that design agency did a great job for them. Um, but he said to me, he's like, you know, we did this work with this other agency. It was great. The experience was great. But we were left with a question, okay, but now what? And that really like stuck with me. You know, I've, that's something I've been thinking about for several years now. Is like, we are the now what? But we're not only the now what, we're the do this and then the now what? Um, so that's, that's kind of how I could summarize it. That's excellent. That works well. Yeah. All right, so let's go back to launch talk. Website was part of the launch. Was there new branding or anything, or you know, are are you doing uh, the, new the, the branding? The branding stayed primarily. The, the visual identity stayed fairly the same, um, other than we you know developed a new color palette. We changed some language a bit. We uh, clarified and cleaned up some things from a positioning standpoint. Yeah, I mean that's when most of the focus has been is, is really working through all of those details and bringing somebody like Paul on to kind of help clarify some of that stuff has been really huge. Um, yeah. Again, challenges were just, you know, we think about this stuff every single day for other people and it's easier when you're, you know, a, a degree removed from it and you're doing it when you're right. involved in it and you're making the decision of like, well, this isn't just work I'm producing. This is work that's going to affect <laughs> me personally for quite some time. So it's, it's removing yourself from some of that emotion and, and being more objective about it. And I think that's probably the bigger challenge for me personally. Right. Yeah. Well, and we, you know, and Paul's been in these conversations. Uh, sometimes it's, it's so much easier to be the one asking those really hard questions. Right. <laughs> I mean, not sometimes it's always it's, easier to be so. on that side. <laughs> But you don't, yeah, you don't always consider it until you end up having to answer those. Then questions. when you have to be the one asking the question and then answering it, yes. and you're doing both halves, yeah, then that's you, the tricky Then part. you find other things to do because that's just, yeah, it's one of those. It's like, uh, we'll, well do and, that and, later. and you bullshit yourself on the answer. That's, yeah. the, that's the tough part is you, you need yeah. someone, someone else so that they can be like, yeah, no, that's not true. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. Yep. All right. Exactly. Well, is yep. there... Anything else, you know, related to the launch that, that uh, I guess is, is worth noting that people would want to know about or, you know, uh, it, anything else that's, that's being launched, I guess, as part of the launch? Uh, in terms of like actual deliverables, I, I think, you know, most of it's out. It's more of like us continuing to, to tell the story. It's going to be publishing a lot more content. It's going to be, you know, publishing our own podcasts and our, you know, a lot more case studies and, and, you know, updating our Instagram account a lot with a lot of the work we've done. I mean, we, uh, we have something like 120 logos that we've done that we haven't published in any way, shape or form that we're kind of <laughs> sitting on all this content to show people. So that's the exciting part for me is, is like finally like being able to kind of open up the curtains and show everybody. Well, any advice for anybody who's, you know, kind of going through a, a big change like that? Is there any way yeah, I sure. could have got you to <laughs> work yeah. with somebody else? Don't, don't try to do it yourself. <laughs> um, the, the first thing that we did when we hired Paul is I charged Paul with being the project manager for the website launch because every single month we said we were going to do it that month and it never happened. So Paul's first day, I said, you are allowed to yell at anybody, including me. You can send me a Slack message. You can send me an email. You can text me. You can call me. You can come pound on my door in my house. You can swear at me and do whatever you got to do just to make sure that this thing gets launched. And that's pretty much exactly what happened. Uh, Paul was a huge pest and did exactly what he was supposed to do, and we got it done. So I uh, well, work, work, doing the work for yourself is hard. So yeah. How many days from hire did the site go up? It was probably about a week, right? <laughs> Seven, eight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Did he bother you over the I, I weekend? I think it might have too? been ten, technically, but yeah, might have been. It might have been ten days, but I mean, it, it wasn't even two weeks. And you know, we'd been we'd had right. a number of stalled starts because you know something comes up and you make excuses to do work right. for somebody else. And finally, it was like, well, Paul's handcuffed and he's not going to be able to do anything until this is done. So, so it's a thousand days in in development, and then that last ten days, Paul got it over the finish line. Huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly right. So now Paul gets all the credit, right? <laughs> Paul, Paul posts on Paul posts on LinkedIn. Yeah, he yeah. has ninety five right. comments, two hundred and fifty reactions. Yeah. 
And everyone's Dan, like, wow, Dan's Paul, very bitter. A great job. Great job. Paul. Dan, Dan's bitter. We should we should start calling out some names here, Dan. Some of the, some yeah. of your, your best friends in the world who who engage with my post and not yours. Man. I know, pretty much, really. <laughs> pretty much. That's the way it is. That's the other part I'm here for, right? Uh, show up on LinkedIn and yell at people. So those are my two strongest skill sets. <laughs> those are important. Those are important. Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, you kind of already talked about challenges on on that front. It is there's an awful lot, you know, of planning and doing it yourself. And I think that's great advice. Get somebody else to help you, right? That's always the the <laughs> angle there. Yeah. So, so all right, that's enough about me. I'm, <laughs> I don't like all this attention on me. So tell me a little bit more about what you guys are doing then. Yeah. Well, as as Paul alluded to earlier, we're having to make a a fairly significant kind of change in the direction that we're trying to take. Um, a lot of it comes down to, uh, well, when everybody got locked down, we got shut down pretty much completely because so yeah. much of our, our recording and so on was face to face or in studio. Uh, so pretty much every, you know, it was like hitting a brick wall and, uh, that coupled with the fact that I'm uh, I'm watching my kids during the day every day now because daycare is closed and preschool is closed uh, means that uh, you know time scheduling and got schedules got a lot uh, more complicated and even with this reopening that's going to happen here shortly for a lot of businesses. Uh, I still probably won't be able to function on a regular business schedule. So some of what we decided to do uh, at VidWheel was to, because, you know, uh, even though we have some other folks working with us, I'm still kind of the, the, the primary, I guess, in terms of uh, getting out in front of people and shooting a lot of stuff and doing things like that. Uh, so we actually are, 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 are launching a new project product that I think will hopefully um, help with our with my new unorthodox schedule and still being able to engage a lot of business owners and so on. Uh, and we're calling it the Vidwheel Creator Network. And uh, the tagline I have written here in my notes is that it'll it'll help you unlock your ability to create powerful and professional video, right? Uh, we're looking to target like owners and founders and those types of folks who have a little bit of that like DIY, I wanna do this stuff myself type of streak and helping them create video. So if they go and mm -hmm. shoot everything during the day when you know we don't have the regular availability, we can still do post-production and so on on the back end if they need it. But a big piece of this product itself is that we're setting people up with studios that they can put in their home or office. We're helping coach them on how to record, how to edit and distribute and all the other bits and pieces if they want it. And then we're trying to create a community uh, where all these creators can come together, kind of talk to each other, bounce ideas off each other, ask questions, but kind of create something that's gonna allow all these people to, to kind of learn from each other, learn from us and flourish in producing their, their own content. So that's the hope. And, uh, I think the bigger hope is that, you know, they'll need, uh, they'll need help from renown down the line when they get so big that they, uh, need the rebrand and, uh, sure. you know, distribution <laughs> and the uh, HubSpot set up and all that stuff. So mm -hmm. that's, that is our kind of, plan that's our our push forward but um you know so how are you gonna pull all that goes. off what's that how are you gonna pull that there's a softball question how are you gonna pull that off <laughs> <laughs> how are we gonna pull off the the whole network or, or the yeah no the but product? i guess i guess the better question is like you know so you like you're talking about repositioning yourself and things like that mm -hmm. um you know how how do um, is it more like training? Is it more like consultation type work, showing somebody how to do that uh, yes. and then having them hang? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, 
I guess, how are we going to pull it off? It, it turns into as much a consulting gig as anything else, right? And then a lot of the production work is not as schedule based. So it ends up being a little more, uh, a little more doable given all the weirdness that's still going on. So. Oh, and you've got, isn't it, what is it, it's a Slack? You're using Slack, right? So there's, there's a Slack community. Uh, so right. you can constantly engage there. There's a little bit of consulting. There's the equipment coming. And then there's whatever they want to opt in from there. Right, right, yeah. So I mean, I, I we'll feel like the equipment alone is a huge value just because equipment can be a barrier to entry for a lot of people. And there's a lot of research that you have to do to understand it. And just having a resource that somebody can just say like, okay, use these five things these will get you set up it's easy to do that i think that takes a lot of the worry away from people alone well that and that's a big it's a big piece of what we tried to develop so we made this this home kit that we put together is uh going to be a standardized system that actually if you sign up for the service you get one of these kits just sent to your home or office so everybody will be on very similar gear which will kind of help with that whole hey this happened to me type of thing or if they're coming to us for troubleshooting it's not like you know everybody's got a different piece of equipment or you have to go back to the manufacturer right. or that type of stuff it'll be a little more or you can almost form a community where people can help each other right if you know that right. a couple different people are you know colleagues anyways or peers or friends you can kind of have them kind of help with troubleshooting themselves because everybody's using similar gear yeah yeah and, yeah. and some of it some of it kind of came out of through this whole covid lockdown canon went and did uh i don't know if you heard about this at all dan but they released mm -hmm. this webcam software so a lot of new canon cameras are now able to be used as webcams and that's what mm -hmm. part of what this this kit is built around so it's a gotcha. it's built around the m50 which is a little mirrorless canon body um which is is pretty great that's what i'm streaming on right now and that's the other piece that's kind of could be cool about it is uh you can stream high quality with it and you can um you can record high quality video with it as well so but i didn't i hijacked my own podcast there so <clears throat> let's move on dan <laughs> sounds good uh so i'm gonna ask you the one hard but uh, kind of question that we ask everybody through all these podcasts. Um, uh oh, what all right. is I'm ready. one thing and only one? This is part of what makes it so hard, right? You have to pick the one that you think is the most impactful. But what's one thing that you've done to make your business or a client's business smarter? Oh man, um, yeah, I think Paul's Paul's giving me a I, clue I, over there. Well, well, I think I could, I think I could uh, answer one thing we've done for our business and one thing we've done for other people's businesses. So I'm going right, to ignore it. your, I'm going to ignore your rules. <laughs> uh, I, I, I really do think, I think the one thing that we've done smarter for other people's businesses is we are addressing all the points in the marketing and sales cycle and just bringing it all in house so they have one place to go. Um, and it, it will streamline their efforts. It will hopefully make all of their efforts uh, more systematic and, and more cohesive. And hopefully that should be, you know, result in better results. Um, so I think that's overall the one thing, as far as the one smarter thing that we've done for ourselves, I, I'll, I'll take Paul's cue, but I will agree with that. Uh, you know, working with somebody as um, quote unquote, an outsider to kind of spearhead our own efforts and rebranding ourselves. Uh, yeah. I, that's been it. I mean, uh, when I went through CEL in 2017, even back then we were talking about rebranding and launching a new website. And one of the pieces of advice I got then was like, somebody said, well, why wouldn't you just work with another agency to re redo yourself? And I was like, well, I'm a little hesitant to hire another agency to rebrand us. That feels a little, little icky. Um, so I think hiring Paul was a, a good compromise for that in that, um, you know, it, it did get that outside perspective that helped us. Excellent. They're good answers, so I won't edit them out, I promise. Good. <laughs> Sounds good. Nice. Ultimately right. you're in you're in control of the answer. <laughs> yeah, I can uh, I can I can cut cut it all up in weird ways and make you say whatever I want, right? Um, just leave so, him frozen. That's a question. Yeah. <laughs> like, okay, anyway, moving on. Um, 
All right. So there's only one more question here. So we're going to, we're going to be fine with your, your schedule too, Dan. Um, and it's just open-ended, right? Uh, the, is there anything you would want to say to the audience that we do have or any kind of information that you want to get out there? Um, it can be something about your company. Uh, we've had people recommend books. We've had people, um, you know, recommend, uh, maybe podcasts. I don't remember. There's yep. been a lot of them at this point. So, website, um, a mentor has been, it's I, been I think, great. I think the greatest thing that has led to our success, um, was I had, uh, a feeling a long time ago when I started my own business is to really rely on the people that I've hired as my team. So letting go and letting go of control of certain things and trusting uh, the people that I work with to, even if they make a decision or a choice that isn't necessarily the same one I would have um, allowing it to, to see itself through. And if it works, it works. If it doesn't, then we learn. Um, but, but not trying to guard everything myself and do everything myself and really trusting in the people that I work with, um, and I, I give a lot of credit to the people on my team. So, you know, Ryan Herleman is our developer. Nick Haas is our creative director. Matt Zalasco is our marketing director. Uh, Nick and Matt are partners in the business as well. Uh, and then Shelby is our, our newest addition and our designer. I mean, newest besides Paul, but like, you know, Shelby's been with us not even quite a year yet. And man, what a, what an impact she's had on our, on our company and just allowing people to really, you know, flex their muscles and, and give them the room to grow. And I find that, by doing so, it, it creates a, a really great culture in the team. We help each other. We support each other. Um, we challenge each other when it's necessary. So I think that's been the biggest lesson I've learned through, you know, previous jobs that I've had, talking to other business owners. Um, to me, the people that are successful are the ones that do that, that they, you know, allow people to do their best. And the ones that aren't successful are the ones that try to micromanage and do everything themselves. So that's been the biggest thing for me. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a great answer. Um, and it is, uh, it's definitely a barrier to growth, right? If you can't, you know, let people do their own thing a little bit. So the biggest challenge is going to be as we scale and as our team, you know, doubles and triples in size, uh, you know, maintaining that same culture. So now, you know, as a small team of six people, we're still, you know, pretty close. We're all friends. We have happy hour beers together and things like that. You know, what happens when we're a team of 20 and we can't necessarily all manage schedules like that? It's still maintaining that. Uh, from as a from my job as the leader of the company, that's going to be one of my biggest initiatives is making sure that that culture is maintained um, and that it's, it's built to be scalable so we can grow. Um, but I, I think ultimately, you know, we, we have five core values in our company and, and those really do uh, drive the decisions we make. Excellent. Here's the answer to how you get everybody together. Even if you have 20 or they're all over the world, video games. Oh, here games. we go. Video games. Video games. <laughs> yeah. I've been pushing that, but yeah, Paul knows. Um, say, happy hours aren't hard to get people to even at 20. Like I'll make sure they get to the happy hour. Okay. Yeah, sure. Yeah, right. <laughs> It'll be happy hour management will be my thing. It's fine. And I say that I'm not even a, a gamer that's just i feel yeah like that's i'm not i'm not a that that you games. Could, i'm yeah, a lot more yeah. of a happy hour guy I yeah. yeah me too uh paul i don't know do you have any parting words over there i'll let you have the last word too oh cool well <laughs> if you're looking for something to eat go to winfield's pub yay and uh check out renowncreative.com the website that paul built <laughs> the website that Paul <laughs> exactly. There it goes. More credit for Paul. <laughs> All right. I'm gonna uh, put that quote well, on LinkedIn. <laughs> yeah. You should. Next time you, you share the site. Uh well, that's that's it. That's all I have for formal questions. So thanks for coming on. Congrats on the launch, Dan. Yes, thanks very much for having us. On uh on the new position there. And yeah, let's uh I don't know. Let's let's all kind of keep helping people uh, do the best they can through their Absolutely. marketing and uh, you know, in our case, some video and stuff too. All right, yeah, for sure. All Sounds right, good. thanks Excellent. a lot, guys. Appreciate it. Yeah. See you. Bye bye. Yes. So that does it for this episode of the Smarter Business Podcast. If you like what you heard, please. 
comment, like, give us feedback. We would love to hear it. And if anything was useful, share it with your friends. Thank you. As a special treat, uh, on this episode, Dan has a little bit of a lighting trick that he, he kind of told us right after we stopped recording, and he's going to run through. So and, since we're uh, all using Zoom, a, yeah. yep, since we're all using Zoom, uh, sometimes the lighting isn't ideal. So I'm, my office happens to have a window right here. I have the shades drawn. It's a little dim. So just I'm using a 27-inch iMac. One of the things I do is I just open up a text edit window, a blank one. And if you look at the lighting on my face right now, you'll see it change. That's a little bit too bright. But all I'm doing is I'm making a text edit window that's large. And then I can adjust the lighting. I can move the box. I can move the lighting around on my face a little bit, all for free, without any expensive equipment involved. <laughs> so that's my, that's my hot take. I like Woo. it. I like and and like I said, I've 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 mentioned that in some of my webcam coaching sessions that you can. It's all about using what you got right there, right? You know? And that's that's an awesome tip. So, yep. Thanks, Dan. Thank you. Right. Easter Take egg care. for everybody. Easter egg. Hopefully, you see it. <laughs>